We're good. <clears throat> yeah, there should be one more. I'll give it like two seconds. I actually just had somebody. Say that somebody registered. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, so basically what we have is a uh, presentation that kind of explains what student government does as well as um, how to get involved, uh, a little bit more inside of what student government is because traditionally in the past, this is the first year that we're doing this, uh, but in the past students kind of signed up to be in student government um, with like the preconceived notions that they got from high school uh, and what student government is in high school um, it's a lot different in college. Um, it's a lot more involved. Um, we'll talk a little bit about time commitments. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the committees that are in student government. Um, and I, I promise it won't be an hour long. I just wanted a case like we had a lot of questions. Um, I wanted to allow some time uh, for people to ask those questions. Um, but Avery, if you want to start with the first slide. So I'll start by introducing myself. Hello, everyone. My Hi. name is Avery Howard. I'm the Executive <laughs> Vice President for Student Government. And uh, Justin, you can introduce yourself now, I guess. Yeah. Justin Shaughnessy, I'm the President. My apologies. Um, so first thing we're going to talk about is like the Executive Committee. So these are the appointed and elected officials to kind of lead student government, if you will. So if you think about it as a hierarchy standpoint and like or, or an organizational structure, you have the President, you have the executive vice president, and then you have four um, vice presidents over the four committees, and then you have the chief of staff and the parliamentarian as well. So like it's listed here, right now these are the people who are in those positions currently, um, but the four committees that the vice president oversees is student life, assessment and enrichment, public relations, and financial affairs. Yeah, and we'll go into a little bit of what those people do. Um, but these are all, of course, students. And so um, if you're in student government and you want to get more involved with the student government, these are positions you can either run for or you're appointed by the president. So um, obviously, president, executive, vice president run on a ticket together. And we'll talk about that in the elections section. Um, chief of staff, which is Gianna Battaglia, is appointed um, by the president. Um, vice president for public relations, which is no longer Danya because she has an internship. Um, it's Faith um, Marcio. And she's appointed, and then the vice president for financial affairs. We'll talk about what they do, but they're appointed as well. <clears throat> our advisors. Um, so our advisors are not students, um, but rather professional staff or administration or faculty at YSU. Um, and so these are some of our, our advisors. And so when you're in student government, um, we talk. One of the selling points for student government is obviously advocacy. So advocating for the students in your college making sure that their concerns are brought to the attention of um, people that have the power to make uh, decisions that affect the student body. Um, we'll, we're lucky enough to have some of those people actually meet with us as a student government body on a weekly basis. Um, and so some of those people are um, Erin Driscoll, who's our OG number one. Um, she is the executive director for student experience and residence life. Um, so she oversees uh, you know, components of housing, which I believe you both live in for other people here, but um, she oversees components of housing and residence life. She oversees student activities. Uh, and she oversees a lot within the student experience realm. Um, so anything like that, she actually meets with us on a regular basis. Um, she meets, she comes to our, we invite her to our executive meetings. She's very involved um, because of her role within student experience and also because she's very passionate about student government. Um, the other one is Dr. Allison Kaufman. And Dr. Allison Kaufman is a coordinator for the Office of Assessment. Um, so her position is really um, you know, held to uh, to the in the in the realm of our one of our committees, which is the Committee for Assessment and Enrichment. Um, her office does it assesses the climate on campus. It assesses a lot. So you will see a lot of surveys come out from her office. Um, but she her job is to take those surveys. Uh, and really interpret those surveys in a way that um, can, can, you know, for the betterment of the student body. She shares those results with student government on a regular basis, so that way we have a better pulse of um, what's going on on campus. Avery? 
So our next two are, you can read, but our next two are Dr. Cooper and Dr. and well, Provost Smith. Uh, Dr. Cooper is the current chair of the Academic Senate, uh, as well as obviously a professor in the biological sciences. Um, and he's critical to student government and the aspect of Academic Senate. And so him having an executive position on that uh, really gives us additional insight on what's going on academically and with faculty as well. Um, he also provides obviously great insight when it comes to executive meetings and student body meetings as well. Um, he's very critical um, when it comes to different changes made to the curriculum. Um, so we'd love to have him. He's also great. Uh, Provost Smith is also another advocate for obviously academic side of things. Mm. Um, and he's also a part of big decisions that are made. So changes made to spring break this semester, changes made to um, credit, no credit, changes made in a faculty standpoint, he kind of oversees and is, and is kind of, you could say, the liaison between faculty and administration. Um, so he's very critical to student government as well, as well as academic senate, which is something that we will also talk about later in this presentation. Uh, there, I was muted. Okay, Provost Smith um, is one of our newer, like, uh, you know, one of our newer advisors. Um, but like he said, we're kind of like, <clears throat> we, we try to touch on every realm of the university. So academics is a big one. Um, and so having the person in charge of all academics at the university, the number one top person in, in the field of academics is extremely helpful. Um, so he, he really helped us when there was the faculty strike, um, student government was, was having regular conversations with the provost um, about you know, the effect it has on the student body and, and how we can mitigate those effects. Um, but yeah, so he's definitely an asset. I would like to add one more point to this. So right now, these are our current advisors for I guess, our SGA administration, but the president and vice president are at liberty to change or exchange some of these advisors as they see fit. So currently for 2020, 2021, these are our advisors, but they may look different next semester or next year, sorry, uh, and so on and so forth, so. Um, other people to kind of know um, within student government and, and within any, like as a student, I guess, in general, um, are Joy Picalba Byers, who's the um, Associate Vice President for Student Experience. Um, so she, her and Elaine together, um, who's also the Interim Associate Vice President for Student Experience, uh, oversee pretty much everything within this division. So they oversee um, housing, they oversee student activities, they oversee student government, they oversee uh, aspects well it used to be student conduct but now that's uh, Dr. Nicole Constroller but um, pretty much everything that affects students the rec um, all of that stuff that's not within the academic realm um, but it's within the division of student experience so like housing obviously isn't an academic thing so they kind of oversee that uh, and different things like that and then Dr. Nicole Constrolo who is um, <clears throat> I think effective February 1st will be the dean of students um, so she will be in charge of Kind of like on a case manager basis which which she's doing now um so she would be in charge of uh student outreach and support um that contact tracing stuff um as well as uh student conduct um and then at the bottom we have Lori granito who's the administrative assistant for student government and student activities aaron hungerman who's a conduct officer um she's also served within housing um so she might know her from there um and then the executive assistant to the AVPs, which are Elaine and Joy, uh, is Jane. Um, so you might, you know, come across her. But these are just important people to know um, within the division. Um, but we'll we'll skip past that. So what is student government? Um, so student government association, uh, I always say, and it's it, bound by our constitution, is the sole representation of the student body at YSU. Um, so what does that mean? Any time the university, the administration, uh, faculty need student input, they go to student government because you guys are elected officials within um, student government association. And so what it is, is basically um, the way for them to ask the student bodies for the student body's input without having to pull every student at YSU. Um, so, so any concerns that come from students, it's important that student government bring that 
to um, the appropriate uh, people. Um, we represent each college. So I, I talked to um, some of you before about how student government is, is made up, but we're made up of representatives from each college. So it's based on enrollment size. So the College of Graduate Studies, we have three representatives because of the size of the college. Uh, but I believe like uh, the Batonsi College of Health and Human Services has like six or seven um, representatives, maybe even more. I don't know off the top of my head, but um, those are all of the colleges that are represented. Um, yeah, yeah, perfect. And then Academic Senate, Avery, you can talk about that. Yeah, so Academic Senate is a separate component that most people don't familiarize with student government. So it still falls in the branch of uh, student government association. So we have this, we, I guess, terminology is we have the SGA student body, which is what Justin mentioned, which is the representatives of each college. But then you have academic senators, which is another branch <clears throat> of student government that the executive vice president oversees. Uh, so academic senate is basically what it sounds like. Uh, senators, both students and faculty that deal with academic issues. So that is academic events like graduation, um, just another big academic event. Any kind of like lecture kind of talking here, they will also be on that. Academic conduct, grievances, things like that are discussions that happen in academic senate. Um, changes to credit, no credit was discussed in academic senate. Uh, spring break was discussed in academic senate. What else? Um, general education requirements, changes to curriculum, all those types of things are discussed in academic senate. And so uh, we have 15 senators that are tried to be evenly distributed between uh, the different colleges, uh, but at least one person from each college needs to be a senator. And so that will kind of give way to provide input from different colleges. Uh, but both of these we'll talk about more in descriptions of like how do they operate, what is really their job description, and what are the kind of like the, the commitments that you need to make for each position. Right. Um, but outside of student government, drawing it back to the body that we talked about and mentioned earlier, the three ways that we kind of help and advocate for students. One is funding. So we fund student organizations and really Justin can go more in depth to that because he was actually the vice president for student, uh, for, ugh, can we talk? for financial affairs. Uh, but we also provide information. So we do that through many different ways, whether it's our podcast that everyone should go listen to, Tuesday Tea Time, or it is um, just emails that we send out, polling for students' advice or things like that, and advocacy. And we do that in also multiple ways, uh, attending committee meetings, attending, um, bringing up issues to the appropriate administration or faculty, uh, and having those important conversations on the behalf of students. Um, and then when we talk about Academic Senate, we'll talk about the elections and like how to be involved in those. Um, but Academic Senate, I want to make sure I say it, that the application you fill out to be a representative on student government, you would fill out a separate one um, to be an academic senator. So you can run for both of those positions this year for next year. Um, you know, they're not, they don't conflict as far as time goes. Um, and we have actually a lot of students that do both. Um, so if you, if you wanted to commit to both, you can. The Legislative Assembly. Um, so we kind of talked about this already. Um, I think I'm going to skip it. Um, yeah, the representatives from each of those colleges. Um, and then we also have three freshman representatives because you guys can't run an election. A freshman can't run an election in high school for college. So we appoint three freshman representatives through applications and stuff like that. My mother is calling me. Um, but we have uh, 15 total senators and we talked about that. So I'll skip that. Um, Okay, <clears throat> so time commitments. Um, you know, obviously the people that want to join student government tend to be the people that like have a lot of their time already sucked up. Um, so I'll kind of go over the time commitments um, for the for student government. So the first one is you have to attend weekly meetings from four to five. Um, the weekly meetings consist of a legislative assembly meeting, um, which is just a fancy way of saying like all of student government. Um, so there's about, like I said, about 40, 39 representatives. Um, on Mondays at four to five, we meet together. And then on alternating Mondays, so you would meet as a body on every other Monday. And then on the other Mondays that are available, you would meet with your committee. Um, so each representative is assigned to one standing committee on student government. Um, and it really depends on 
what you want to get out of student government. It depends on, you know, where your interests lie. Um, so you work with the president, vice president, and chief of staff to kind of get you placed on a committee um, that, that your abilities uh, would be best used. <clears throat> so business majors, finance majors tend to fall within the financial affairs committee. Um, a lot of people that really val uh, value advocacy go into student uh, assessment enrichment, um, where they're like, you know, gauging campus climate and stuff. Um, but you have to attend all of those committee meetings um, and you have to serve at least on one of those. So the attendance policy is uh, a member that accrues, accrues more than two unexcused absences. Um, they will go into like review for possible removal. Um, and an unexcused absence would be anything outside of those normal like um, medical absences. Um, work is not considered an excused absence. So um, if you're on student government, that four to five time block on Mondays would have to be available from work. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, uh, you obviously can be removed if, if those, those times um, conflict with, with uh, work and you're not able to get off because again, the job of an SGA representative is to represent the college. And if you're not able to attend any of those meetings, you're not really representing your college. And so we would look for somebody that's able to do it. Um, but that's pretty much um, that's pretty much it for the time commitment. But within the legislative assembly, um, representatives have a lot of privileges uh, when it comes to talking, debating, voting, and stuff on that like that. So any appropriation that comes out of our financial affairs committee, um, which is giving money to student organizations to host events, um, like we talked about, we we fund events and travel on campus. Um, we have a budget around traditionally it's around one hundred and fifty six thousand dollars. Um, that, that that committee oversees the spending on. Um, and then all of the legislative assembly votes on that. So it's, it's kind of a check on um, that process, but there's a lot of words on there. Um, I am also going to send you guys this recording to your emails. Um, so you have access to look over it. Um, so yeah, if there's uh, any questions though, please reach out to us. Um, we don't have too much more to go over, but I will try to be quick. So we have questions. So in comparison, we can talk about the senator's commitment. Uh, like Justin mentioned, the way that you get able to do both is just because they don't conflict uh, unless you have, you know, you acquired additional responsibilities within senior government that may be an issue. Uh, but senators meet with the, the whole academic senate uh, every first Wednesday of every month from four to five. They love back time from four to five because most people are free. Um, but outside of that, you are then placed in a committee of your choice and that committee upon themselves find the a best time to meet and discuss whatever issues. Uh, and we'll go through the different committees or we'll show the different committees that Academic Senate and student government has. Uh, but those exhortations and kind of duties will vary depending on what um, committee you're in. But the overall duty of a senator within uh, the Academic Senate is to really best represent, and I don't know how many times because they represent your student body uh, to the best of your abilities. Um, so if you see some type of discrepancies when it comes to the injustice of students, uh, that is your time to speak up as a senator and say, mm, I don't know if this fits right for the whole population or this is for the betterment of students. Academic Senate in those meetings Wednesday at four are the best time to do that. Um, there is a different uh, kind of absent uh, policy for academic senators because we only have uh, once a month meetings you're only at liberty to miss two of those before you go up for removal. And that removal is very immediate and quick and is deliberated by the, the vote of the executive committee to remove you uh, just because there's only 10 meetings a year. Uh, and so to have someone available for at least 10 of those is very critical. And if you miss two, you almost miss half. So a little bit difference in terms of mm -hmm. trying to be present. Perfect. Yeah. And I also, this is a lot of information. Um, and I, I promise you nothing. It's not intimidating in any way. Uh, the elections process, all that stuff. Um, it's, you know, run by students and it's not, <clears throat> I, I guess it's not extremely content heavy. Um, so once you start getting into it, if you're elected, you know, the first couple of weeks, you, you will get the hang of everything uh, pretty quickly, um, how everything operates. But the SGA committees, 
Um, I'll touch on these briefly, um, but these are one of the four committees that as a representative, you would have to serve on, um, so one of them. So the Financial Affairs Committee uh, meets with student organizations and represents, uh, recommends funding for each organization. Um, so like I said, those organizations will fill out an application. They would come before the Financial Affairs Committee. Um, they would talk about the benefits it has to the, the university as a whole, um, the itemized cost list of you know, what, what they need funding for. Um, right now we're seeing a lot of virtual conferences. We're seeing a lot of um, speakers. I don't, I don't, we haven't had too many speakers, um, but that's usually what you see um, with there. In a normal year that's you know not uh, a pandemic, um, you would see a lot of applications about like events being held on campus, uh, travel events, going to Florida, going to Texas, going to um, whatever. Um, but it also gives you a lot of insight inside that committee. Um, public relations, um, you oversee marketing, social media, other outreach efforts. Um, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Student life uh, organizes events that are, are sponsored by student government, and they also facilitate the elections every spring. Um, so, you know, as people that might be interested in running an election, Student Life Committee um, is really going to be the one you're dealing a lot with. And Tess Emerson, like I said, is our Vice President for Student Life. Um, she'll be more in contact with you um, throughout the elections process if you do choose to um, run. Assessment Enrichment, the last committee, um, focuses on solving complaints received by students and improving campus life as a whole. Um, so they're a complaint box. So the, the normal thing, the normal function that you would think of student government as, um, they really deal a lot with. So um, right now she's working on getting swipe out hunger on our campus. And so um, our Vice President for Assessment Enrichment, Kennedy Romeo, uh, is working with other universities um, across Ohio um, to introduce a system where your meal swipes um, you could potentially donate a certain number of unused meal swipes a week that go into this like bank where students that are, you know, have food insecurities might be able to use those swipes um, that you didn't use to, to then swipe and, and eat um, the following week and, and on and on. Um, so that's something that she's looking into, uh, but that's just an example of what you would do in that committee. So academic senate committees, there's a plethora and there's still more being developed and growing as things change. And I won't go over all of them. I'll just like pick up you to kind of explain. Uh, so I sit on the general education committee. And so what we deliberate is how do we change the general education requirements to best fit the students? And so one of the biggest issues were transfer students were coming in with X amount of credits, but they didn't really line up with some of the general education requirements that we have at Youngstown State. Um, and so how do we try to figure out a way to not make them graduate a year past their expected date or a semester past their expected date because of these summer general education requirements that we have? Um, happy to say that we were able to accomplish and come to some type of uh, compromise and figure that out uh, for most students. Uh, but typically that committee oversees what kind of general education requirements uh, would be necessary for students to best fit their education. Um, in addition, so all of these committees generate their own ideas for whatever they see fit that needs to change. And then all those ideas then go to the whole body of the Academic Senate, the whole Senate, I guess, and they all have an opportunity to vote on it. So these committees are working committees in the sense of they generate ideas and they formulate plans, but they don't actually implement those plans. It needs to be voted by the whole Senate and then that's when it's implemented. Perfect. So that's just one example. Um, these, I can also send out uh, the description for each committee to you guys as well, or put them up on our website so you guys can view the descriptions of how they work. Yeah. And then I, I serve on the Senate Executive Committee, which um, is like the chair of the uh, Senate, kind of oversees um, the operations of all the committees. And then like the, um, they operate when, when the actual Senate can't meet, um, it could be passed through Senate exec if, if something needs to be quick. Um, but the thing about Senate Executive Committee, um, by the Senate's bylaws and by the student government's bylaws, the president of student government um, is automatically appointed to the Senate Executive Committee. So all of these committees you can be a part of. Um, and, and if you run for president, you could be a part of the Senate Executive Committee. Um, but as a representative, you would have all the other committees except for Senate exec. Okay, now what you guys came here for, elections. Um, so that's a little bit about what student government is. Um, I will 
I will take all the questions at the end. So if you have any questions about what student government is, um, we will get into elections and get through everything. And then we'll have questions at the end um, just because I don't wanna record your guys' questions. Um, so I'll stop the recording at the end of this presentation. So that way you guys aren't like on our YouTube or anything, um, uh, but I will we'll go into elections. So elections um, are for any position on student government. So except for the freshman seats, um, and except for any uh, ex officio seats that are appointed by the president. Um, so every college will go through elections. Every, the president, vice president as a ticket would go through elections. All of our um, senators will also go through elections. Um, you know, you might've seen in your emails, uh, your, you know, this fall semester, even the beginning of the semester about applications to be on student government. Those applications are just for vacancies. So if an elected person has to step back because of a class commitment or because of an outside time commitment, then the um, student government can appoint somebody to fill that seat. But traditionally speaking, um, our representatives are all elected. Um, and you are elected for one year duration. So there is a re-election every, every year as necessary. So for example, Avery and I will not be um, the president and vice president next year. Uh, there will be a new election uh, where a new president and vice president is elected. Um, Avery's also graduating and I'm done. Um, <laughs> petitions. So the petition process is um, different for depending on the position you're running for. Um, so if you're running for president or executive vice president, um, those petition processes, um, you have to get 150 students to essentially sign your petition to be put on the ballot. Um, for every other position like representatives, um, for the first year ever, you do not have to get any signatures. Um, you just have to fill out a form that's really a declaration of candidacy. So you fill out the form and it's you declaring um, that you are running for this seat in your college um, when election times come. Those will be coming up in, I believe, February. So next month, um, those will be coming out and they'll be shared on our website. And there will also be a mass email sent out to the student body um, to, to declare candidacy. Once that's done, it's really kind of handheld from there. Um, because we have your name, we have your email, we know you want to be uh, run an election. So all of the information from that point forward should be shared with you um, through our elections board. Um, but then there's following the declaration of candidacy, which is petitions here, um, there's an elections meeting that is mandatory. Um, so they, they'll have like multiple sessions. You have to sign up for at least one that'll go over the rules um, before the elections. So the rules will include how you're able to campaign. Um, so for example, you're not able to campaign within the classroom. Um, so we've had issues in the past where even a professor is like, oh, blah, 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 you're running for president, aren't you? Yeah, oh, do you wanna like talk to the class about it? You're not able to do that because that's one of our election rules. So they go over that within that meeting and that's why you have to go to that. So you have that understanding before um, campaigning starts. Then we have the presidential and EVP debate, um, which, uh, is really um, a chance for, for representatives and the entire student body to kind of see who they want to vote, vote for, for president and executive vice president. Um, so it's quite literally a debate about um, things going on on campus, how they want to run their platform, uh, and the different things they want to do. Um, you can find a lot on YouTube. I know Avery and my debate was actually on um, Instagram, uh, YSU's Instagram on IGTV. So if you wanted to go check that out to kind of see what that would look like. Um, that's that's an option too. <sighs> Sorry, I'm running out of breath. Avery, do you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, I think you covered all the bases. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, perfect. So I am going to stop the recording. Actually, I'm going to make sure that this is in the video. Um, so email us at sga at ysu.edu for any additional questions. Um, we'll also have a page on our website, sga.ysu.edu that we will update. It's called 2021 to 2022 elections is the tab. So if you click it, um, there's links to what we're doing right now, uh, but there's also will be information um, regarding the elections. This video will be posted to that page. Um, the forms that you need to fill out will be posted to that page, pretty much everything. Um, and then we are also, our offices are in Kilcally Center, uh, room 2218, which is right across from the Cove and right outside the rec center. Um, and then our phone number is right there too, 330 um, But that is it. I am going to stop the recording now, uh, if I can. Mm -mm -mm.